Spiky bits. Hey guys, MBG here today with a first look at the new Imperial Armor Volume 2 Second Edition book. Of course, this thing uh, was originally printed over 10 years ago, back in the early 2000s, which as <laughs> somebody recently pointed out to me, it's still technically the 2000s. When I say 2000s, I mean, you know, 2000 <laughs> to 2010, of course. But anyways, I digress. So this is the uh, this is the second edition reprint. Uh, now, of course, they came out with uh, the third edition, the Taros campaign, which featured you know the the Tau themselves. And if uh, following along in order, it's it's interesting to note that uh, Volume Four, the Anfillion project, was actually Tyranids, which you know the rumor mongers are saying are coming out next, followed by I believe Book Five was Orcs, and followed by another. In the Vrax campaign, which was Imperial Guard. So, a lot to think about how those Forge World supplements are lining up with perceived rumors for a release of 2014. It's almost eerie how they go in order, don't you think? Anyways, so this is uh, this is the reprint, like I was saying. It's over 250 pages long. It's been about 10 years since they uh, since you know they came out with with a book. Before it was more like a um, Kind of like a word journal thing, kind of like the books you can buy from like Osprey and things like that. This obviously has rules and different rules, uh, the, the non-experimental rules for a lot of the new releases, such as like, say, the Fire Raptor or the Sakarian Battle Tanks, things like that. Uh, it's got over 40 tanks in here, and there's also some new surprises that we'll, uh, th that we'll get to here at the end of the book that I don't think anybody saw coming. And I'm not sure if they've been discussed yet, but it was definitely something I picked up on. Uh, one of my favorite things about this book is the mix of newer uh, imagery from using some of the the Horus Heresy uh, Massacre and uh, is Istvan uh, the Betrayal Train from uh, Istvan Three. Uh, a lot of cool looking stuff in there, and also they they went back and they harkened back to some of the older pictures too, which were kind of done very uh, mil militaristic uh, like. And, you know, I think. Um, with like uh, just just the effects and things like that, so it was it was a nice little amalgam of of current current style photoshopping with older style more military journal manual kind of kind of looks to things, which I which I really enjoy because I read a lot of those when I was younger. So, anyways, let's uh, let's take a look at the book. Obviously, the uh, the inset here is a uh, one of one of the uh, the fell blades, uh, definitely a cool tank, and one I've uh, definitely got my sights on personally to uh, to pick up and add to my collection. Let's take a look at the table of contents before this uh, this awesome poster uh, inset here. So here you go. Here's, here's your table of contents, which I'm sure they posted up. I'm, actually, I know they did because I looked at it on uh, Forge World themselves. It gives you all the credits, and then you've got the table of contents itself. And the one thing we're definitely going to take a look at later is the appendix to the Legacies of Glory, which uh, has got some very interesting stuff there. So, what I liked most about this book, oh, another uh, very very cool uh, center folder in, in, in set here is the uh, domains of the Adeptus Astartes, which kind of shows you the area that they're taking the picture of here. Not quite the whole galaxy, but a lot of cool stuff going on, different things, you know, you can kind of read into it, like the, the Sharkadons are up here, and kind of run around doing different things, sighting of the rock, you know, lots, lots of cool little stuff in here, little, little blurbs. I wouldn't mind the story getting advanced a little bit, but hey. You get what you get. Uh, full color book, very, very, very well done. Um, no, no uh, expense spared on the, the printing of the book, which, according to the uh, contents, it was printed in China. Also, interesting enough, I got this book, and I bought a lot of books from Forge World, and they always come like almost destroyed, so to speak. Which you know, it's fine. Like I don't want a ding or a dent there, but I don't know if you can kind of see it here. But there is a there is a huge. A huge gash in this book, and it was uh, it was pretty much pretty well matched, and it goes all the way through the pages. I'm going to call them tomorrow about this, and uh, I'm sure they'll straighten it out because they've they've been nothing but but very good customer service wise. But what's what's very ironic about this, and I'm sure none of you really super care, but I just want to tell you when you spend you know seventy, eighty, ninety dollars on a book, you want it right, so they're gonna they're gonna take care of you. But what, what kind of ticked me off about this was it came in this like amazing mailer. This like whole like cardboard like bodysuit. It was like sandwiched in this, right? And it's taped up, nice and secure, and, and and sandwiched between layers of bubble wrap all around it. Now, and and I got some other kits too, which I'm I'm sure you'll see in the next the next week or so on here. But it, and it, it just came completely smashed on one side. I was so upset. But like I said, I know they'll take care of it. They're really good. 
It's a very high quality book and obviously they want people to be super happy about it. And I've had nothing but but uh but super uh super good customer service with Forge World. I you know, usually on the phone only about 10 minutes. I'm sure it cost me about 10 bucks to call them, but hey, that's that's just calling overseas. So anyways, like I was saying, full color book, very very well done. I haven't gone through and read all the stories yet. I just got this book about three hours ago or so. I kind of skimmed over it, checked out a lot of things, compared some rules, different things like that. But very, very high quality. The the thing I like about this book too is there's about 20 pages of fluff. Let's take a look at the table of contents again. Uh, so there's about 20 pages of fluff, uh, which goes into the using it. And of course, they get into the whole Lord's Award thing, which we're all... <laughs> I'm sure super super excited about depending on who you talk to with the the new 40k escalation rules. You got an introduction of the domains, which is that poster I just showed you there. Then it kind of gets into you know a couple different fluff fluff sections here, which is which is pretty cool. Like you know the different battles and things like that. So it's about 20 pages of fluff. Then it goes into each individual section. Then you got the appendix, which only takes up about 10 pages. So overall, it's about I don't know. I guess about 25 pages of of actual like non rules fluff. And then you know, you get 40 sets of rules, and then it's kind of splashed in there. And like the one section I wanted to show you here was all about the Land Raider, because easily one of the most recognizable uh, vehicles in 40K is the Land Raider itself. Now there's a whole huge section here. That's the Stardust Land Raider. Whole huge section. Lots of great artwork. Lots of great fluff. I read this whole section end to end, and this little cutaway uh, detail was very nice. Now we saw this in Imperial Armor One. Which is a very cool book, also, and it went and when it did all these great cutaways of like the Lehman Russes and all the super heavies, the Bane Blades, everything. It was very, very cool. And this kind of goes along with that that poster, that centerfold poster, like way, way back in the day. Uh, it was more of an isometric view, not not quite the uh, the uh, uh, side view here, but it's still it's still pretty cool to see uh, stuff like this. And there's one of these for like every you know every Rhino, every Rhino variant. All of the flyers, all anything that's in here has one of these in it, which is very cool. And then they have this huge amalgam right here, which you've probably already seen because I, th I think this was in the Adeptus or in the Aeronautical book as well. So lots of cool stuff, lots of cool fluff in here. I wouldn't mind buying a printer of that, something maybe you know at a at a convention and things like that. So it goes into all the different variants of all the Land Raiders and things like that. Lots of fluff, lots of fluff, and then at the end it gives you rules. This is a big. This is a big section because there's a lot of land range. It gives you rules for the forge. The you know the forge roll kits that are, that are actually out there. Of course, 40k, 40k approved stamp approval and things like that. And it's got the the Proteus, the Achilles, and the Helios in this one. The Helios is a little bit different, but it's not too bad. So that's that's pretty much what you can expect from each section. You know, you got a whole section on the Rhino, a whole section on the Predator. You know, a whole section on the all the all the different all the different vehicles. Then you get into the Storm Raven variants, and there's actually a new Storm Raven variant, the Storm Eagle Rock Pattern. There's one of those. So lots and lots and lots of cool stuff in here. Let's just jump to the next section I wanted to show you. So then there's the Relic sections, which give you rules for fielding some of the Horus Heresy stuff in 40K itself. And of course, you know, they're, they have different restrictions on how you can field it. I think in the... Um, uh, I believe in the experimental rules you had to take a Master of the Forge in order to take the Sycharian, but in this it appears you don't. Also, the Fire Raptor gunship, which had experimental rules up until this book came out, they had a Chaos variant, which isn't in here because this is all Loyalist stuff. Kind of disappointing, but hopefully Chaos will get its own book, maybe when they reprint the Vrax stuff here. Maybe when they reboot Chaos, who knows? <laughs> who knows what to expect there? But anyways, so cool stuff here. Nice, nice background story on the Sicarian Battle Tank. Very cool to read. And like I said, it's got all sorts of side views and different things like that. All sorts of fluff. And then they get into the uh, all different manner of vehicles and things like that. And how they work. Not necessarily rules. One thing I wanted to show you was there was some super heavies in here. Like the, uh, the Typhon. Uh, which is not a Lord of War, and it's a super heavy. It's not Apocalypse only. There's no Apocalypse only in this book, like there was in some of the previous books, because of course we have Escalation. It's almost like this book was printed with that in mind, hint, hint, because there is nothing in here that's like Apocalypse only. So now we've just got Lord of War, because, well, it's legal, <laughs> obviously. So uh, this thing's got six hull points, uh, which is obviously <laughs> way above the normal four for, you know, an average quote-unquote heavy tank. 
Then you get into your fly section of your flyers, like I said, super heavies, uh, the Storm Eagle. There's a Storm Eagle Rock variant, uh, which I think is right here. Yep. And there's your Fire Raptor as well. So lots and lots of cool stuff in here. One other thing, oh, a couple other things I wanted to show you. More of the super high color uh, paper and print and kind of layouts that they did with this book. Very cool stuff. Lots of uh, old pictures, like I said, they worked their way in here. And then they've got the uh, the side views. And then you've got all manner of different, uh, I believe this is from the Brax. So lots of cool older pictures, kind of splashed in with some newer stuff. Very cool amalgam of different things. Then you get into Appendix 1, the special rules, which just kind of outlines a lot of things we already know about because they're already in there. A few of the flyer stuff people are unsure about, which was good to have. Then we get to Legacies of Glory, and that's when this book really becomes interesting. So I'm like, oh, what's that? I don't know, that looks cool. Uh, all in all Crusade, whoa, wait, I can, I can do what now? So there's all these different, basically 10, 000, for 10,000 years of war, the, you know, obviously these vehicles, quote unquote, some of them have been around for 10,000 years, thousands of years, which is remarkable to say the least. But anyways, so they can be marked or have these glories uh, bestowed on them for a certain points cost, which gives them like crazy stuff. Like, say you want to say it was in the Instant 5 drop site massacre. Well, you pay the points and it doesn't scatter if it deep strikes, you know, if the vehicle can deep strike, which to say the least. But it also almost gives you like a roadmap for maybe some of the some of the things that are going to be coming out uh, as far as, you know, the future future books of the Horus Heresy pro, uh, series. So it definitely gives you an idea of things that are already on the tips of their tongues that maybe we haven't even thought about yet. Like, obviously, the, the fall system uh, where the Iron Warriors fought the Imperial Fist and some different things that we haven't even thought of yet. So, I mean, because you could go, you could go pre heresy and do the, you know, all, all in our crusade. So, who knows? Who knows what we're going to see here? But anyways... Lots of cool stuff, and then it basically ends in the summary, and the, the uh, back end set is the Typhon tank. So very cool book. Like I said, it's huge. Uh, it, you know, if you're uh, if you're fortunate, it will come <laughs> very well protected in a cardboard mailer inside some bubble wrap, and not be super smashed. But like I said, I'm sure I'm sure they'll take care of it for me. So that's pretty much it for this one. Uh, make sure you stay in the trenches with 40K, subscribe to this channel, uh, visit our blog, Spiky Bits, of course, and listen to our podcast, Forge a Narrative. Spiky Bits.